All right, today is episode seven on this Facebook 5-3. Uh, we're going to try to get the cam in, oil pump, uh, front rear covers. You know, I, I don't know how far we're going to go, but we're going we're gonna to go as long as we can today. we just been super behind and just hadn't had time to make any videos. So uh, hang loose. We're going to get started on this line. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is get this cam slid in. A little assembly lube on the journals. We're not really concerned about the lobes. It's gonna, it's gonna get plenty anyway. So the whole goal is to just try to go as straight and as gentle as possible so you ain't slamming the lobes into the bearings. Oh, let me grab a screwdriver. I mean, the bearings is, is, is pretty forgiving, but we don't want to molest them for just no reason. Container plate on. And, and always just just because I always put a little assembly lube on the face where the cam rides on the plate on both sides because I have seen the gear eat the plate up. <clears throat> and I mean, it could have just been bad components, but it takes a second to get some oil there. So we ain't gonna leave nothing to chance. And obviously this is Gen 4 stuff. The Gen 3 has uh, hex head flange bolts, but it's the same scenario. And if you buy a replacement, I've, I've seen the questions and arguments on the interweb, you know, people saying you can't use this one or that one on the Gen 3 or the Gen 4. It makes absolutely zero difference. You can use a Gen 3 on a Gen 4, and you can use a Gen 4 on a Gen 3. But for the most part, what you buy today is going to be this style, countersunk with flathead screws. Um, if you buy them on our website, it's going to be just like this. So this will work. It comes with bolts. This will work on any LS. doesn't matter. <clears throat> so these torque to 18 foot pounds. I already got the engine on top of this center and the, and the dots up. 
So generally what I do is just to make life easy, I'll just stick the gear on, get it lined up, and then we can hang the chain and all of that at one time. And we're not gonna do it here, we've already done it. Um, if you need to see a, de a cam degree in video, uh, I'm sure we'll link one in the description because we just did a cam degree video on this very engine. And we have uh, cam bolts on the website also. I mean, obviously we have all of this stuff on the website, but if you're doing a cam swap and you're going from a single bolt to a three bolt and you need a gear and bolts, we got it. So these torque the 25 foot pounds All right, so we can put some lifters in it. So we got, um, so all the lifters have been soaked for several days. Normally I just do overnight, but these, just because we've been so far behind. Um, another thing, so the, the oil enters the lifter here, and I've seen arguments about it needs, you know, the lifter needs to be this way, or it needs to be this way, depending. And the problem is, is the oil flows around circularly. So one way, you know, if you go with that school of thinking, one way the lifter needs to be pointing this way, and on the other side of the motor, it needs to be pointing the other way. But the problem is it doesn't matter because this band here has all 360 degrees around this band at all times when it's running. So the oil is pressurized all the way around that lifter and that cutout lets it get to the, to the body. And this is the difference. If you've seen the, uh, the Hemi video about how the lifters oil, so the problem with the Hemi versus everything else is this hole is how the internals of the lifter get oil. On the Hemi, this doesn't exist. So it gets oil through the push rod. So this is, you know, like a big deal why it's a problem on the Hemis. But I never, personally, I never pay no attention to where the hole is, which way it goes. It's, it's absolutely irrelevant, so I don't even, I don't even look at it because it just don't matter. But I really think soaking the lifters matters because you got bearings in the wheel and in the whole hydraulic unit. I mean, you know, it need, all that stuff needs oil on startup to be lubricated and not have any issues. So, cause you know, squirting a little assembly lube on it is not gonna get into the wheel and get into the roller bearings. I mean, it's gonna have to soak to take up oil in there for, you know, at least some amount of time.
And I mean, I think most people know, but some people, I mean, you know, if this is your first LS style engine, the lifter trays have a large hole and there's a step on the bolt. That way the bolt doesn't crush the lifter tray. And this is almost like a, a shoulder bolt. We, we call them shoulder bolts or in the industrial world, we call them stripper bolts, but cause they're used on uh, powered uh, strippers and uh, like to guide dies. Um, but that way, w when you tighten this down, th that tray can still find home. Even when this is torqued, that tray is loose. So I have seen once or twice somebody just put a normal bolt in here and, and that, that can create problems because you want that tray to be free to, to move and, and find itself, find center. We also have reusable crank bolts on our website also. So you know what I'm not, they bought an M295. An M295 is like the standard, um, normal, just generic pump. Uh, we don't ever use a 295, we use an M365. It's got like 10, 10% more volume, I think. But the 365 would be the standard pump in a DOD VVT engine. So we, we always use it. It works really good. The pressure is good. I like it. It makes me happy. We also, I mean, obviously, but we, we if you need a part number, we have them on the website also. So I always put a little assembly lube in the pump just to make sure the gears is lubricated. Get on there. Bolts. Yep, and I about got ahead of myself. I almost forgot to put the damper in. And I prefer these much over the spring loaded damper. It's, it's hard to keep the spring in them. Just about every one we take apart, it, the springs done jumped out of the tension one so and, and again this one actually it's, it's pretty tight this, the chain's pretty tight on this one a lot of them be relatively loose but I mean they all like that so it don't it ain't like the end of the world
What in the world? So, you see some people, they'll take the whole front off and they're putting shims in there trying to center this thing. Um, that gear, because it's an eccentric, that gear just can move all over the place. And GM run this thing down an assembly line and they didn't do all of that jazz. So, so what I generally do is I just find, try to find center on the bolt holes so it's not in a bind and it's free. And then I'll snug them up on both sides and then come back and torque them. And, and I mean, you can actually get a pick and still move the gear right now. So, I mean, a lot of stuff means something and a lot of stuff doesn't mean something, but just on normal stuff, this is the way I do it and it, it has never failed me. And it ain't never failed GM either. So I think we'll go ahead and put the valley cover on while we're up here. This is the standard GM unit. And of course we also have these on the website. We'll, we'll link all that stuff in the description. Let me let me blow this off good. It's got a little dust and poo on it. Let me grab a 13. And I see a bunch of people putting them drive in plugs in the, in the DOD ports, and I think that's cornbread. Um, the, the simplest solution is just to tap them and put pipe plugs in it so you got something removable. But with a cover like this, it's O-ringed. I mean, it, it's not leaking, it's not a problem. So the drive-in plugs, to me, just, you know, it, it, the problem it can create in the future is every time you take the motor apart, if you're freshening up something or doing something to the engine, you got that port that's, you know, I don't know, it's that long, that long. And, you know, you can get crap and debris up in there and it's hard to clean it. And the plugs are really hard to get out once you drive them in. And at least if you tap it and put a pipe plug in it, you know, you can just screw the pipe plug out. Um, and if you just use a cover like this, you don't need to do anything except just put the cover on. So to me, this is the simplest solution and you don't have to worry about all of that plug in the junk. Like we done a, it's been a while back now, but we done a LT late Gen 5 for a guy and some other shop had put them I mean, it ain't nothing but just uh, Tempkin roller bearings. They just took a Tempkin bearing and got the rollers out, and that's what they're using as the plugs. And so they had put them plugs in, and they and they the, the taper's too fat, so the plug wouldn't go flush. And then when they tried to put the cover on, the cover wouldn't bolt down because the plug was sticking up out of the block, holding the cover up. 
So then, you know, they had to bring the cover down here and we had to put it in the milling machine and actually spot mill everywhere one of those plugs were to make enough clearance for the, for the plate to bolt down. And so it was just stupid that you would put plugs in and then you buy an aftermarket DOD plate that's already deleting the circuit anyway. So it just, it just doesn't make any sense why you would do that. And then it created a bunch of work for the customer and a bunch of money for no reason. All right, so I think we'll put the front cover on. So on these seals, um, I always just use a dead blow, and it don't it don't take a whole lot. Though. You bring more bolts. Let me get all of this on first so it all makes sense. Because it's another one of them homemade tools that I should be making and selling, but I'm not yet. Like a hundred other projects. So. Let's hang it on. We'll start the bolts. All right, let's. <laughs> So what I did is I took a, a old balancer and I just cut the center out of it and I honed it so it's a slip fit on the crankshaft and this allows us, so when you put this in like that, so now the cover is centered on the seal, but what it's not is the cover will still rotate. And I see uh, some places sell a tool that bolts here and lays up on the here and catches these two bolts. But the problem is, is, and I don't know why it's that way, but when this seal is centered, this cover is low. It's this surface is below this surface. So what I always do is get me some tools. So what I always do is just grab one bolt on each side and I run it up close uh, and, and, then, and then we'll just check the cover and make sure that it's square with the bottom of the block because we can't make it flush. If we do, we pull it on the seal. And we don't, we don't want to pull the seal up. We want the seal to be centered on the balancer itself, and that keeps the seal from getting murdered and overheating. So, and it's the same way on the rear cover, too. So I always just try to fill it and, and make it be even. You might have to rotate it one way or the other to get it even. And then once you get it even, then you can snug up a couple of bolts and you don't have any issues. And I mean, I'm not a big fan of silicone. That feels real good right there. So we'll snug that a little bit, snug that one a little bit and check it again. Yep. So 
I always, <clears throat> pretty much the only place I use silicone on an LS motor is I'll put just a little dab right here in these corners and then I'll do the same thing on the rear, just in those corners. Uh, other than that, it, you know, the, no, no silicone is needed. Um, and then once you get a few snugged up, then this will just come right back out. And and again, I'm I'm gonna make something like this to sell, so you can just you know, have a little aluminum tool that'll just snap in, and then you can do this without having to murder a balancer. And luckily on the rear cover, you know, you got a crankshaft that's centering you on the seal. So it's the same scenario, you just don't need a tool. And I do it the same way. I just make sure it's level as it can be. And it works out the same way. It's, you know, it's, it's above, I mean, it's below the surface also. cover because we got a engine stand in the way so what we do normally is we'll get the crane and just pick it up off of the stand and then we'll assemble the rear cover and then get that torque down and then we just put it right back on the stand and then we can finish up the rest of the episode so we'll go ahead and get everything for the rear built and all of that's ready to go I hope I turned it the right way. We need more bolts. We need one. So that's what the, you know, we got it, the bolts in it and the seal in. And then it just, the, the little white deal is a, like a, an installation tool. And then we can just slide it right over. And then we just start a few bolts like.
Yeah, most of the time when there's a, a leak at the back, people think it's the rear seal, but most of the time it's actually this gasket right here leaking because up at the top, <clears throat> that's main oil pressure going through the lifter galleries. All right, so like I say, same scenario, it's low. It's a little high on this side. Yep, so that feels pretty good. Ah. Let me get the zip gun, make it a little faster. So that's just a guide to locate it. Where did I see the soft Oh, right here. We're getting there. So we'll put our block off in the pan.
And, and there was some confusion about uh, several people when we, we done a video about these block offs. Several people were confused, like, why would you even do that? So this is, because I guess they didn't understand that this is an auxiliary bypass valve. So this is my understanding that GM did this for when the DOD cuts on and off so there's no surge in the oil pressure system. So the pump still has a pressure regulator. So the oil pump is regulating the pressure. This is just secondary to kind of like water hammer, you know, when you slam the faucet on and off and that's what this valve is doing. But we're always deleting the DOD anyway. So, it, you know, it's a moot point. So that's why we always want to get rid of this valve because it's, it's just problems. It just creates problems. And this is a stock pickup and pan that come together. And I did check it, but if you're doing, if you're ever doing an aftermarket pan and a pickup, always check the clearance from the pickup to the bottom of the pan. And, you know, we usually try to maintain three quarters of an inch, I mean, not three quarters, three eighths of an inch, give or take. Um, you know, you can definitely get in trouble if the pickup's close. Um, Missing some. So we, we didn't take this thing apart. Somebody else took this motor apart and then it ended up here. Well, you, you, you know that if you've been watching the series. And so the in the back of these pans, <clears throat> there's two long six millimeter bolts that go down. Or is this one? No, this one don't have the two long ones, does it? Maybe so. Yeah, see, it, it does have the real long ones. So these two bolts is MIA. But I've got some more, but they're just missing. And then one, two, two of the regular bolts is missing. Also three, there's three of them missing. So we're going to have to dig up some bolts here. And they got a bunch of stuff in baggies, but it just ain't all together in the right place. Not in the right place. You holler if you need me. It's fine. I went digging in my honey hole and I found some of the long screws. I don't, I don't know what in the world they done with them, but wherever they at, they gone. And the phone rings.
and the way, <clears throat> which I guess is the nice thing, the way the way these lake gaskets are built, you've got a um, let me get one open here so it makes sense. So you got, I mean, all co the, both the covers, the oil pan, all that jazz. So you got a aluminum core, and then you basically got an O-ring. So the aluminum core allows you to tighten it, but you can't over tighten it, and then give the correct amount of crush on the rubber O-ring. So this pan gasket, you know, it's a solid piece of aluminum, and then it's got a, basically a rubber O-ring bonded around it. And then, so when we tighten it down, I mean, obviously you can over tighten it, but ultimately if you tighten it down properly, then the aluminum is crushed and the O-ring has the correct amount of preload on it to do its job. And man, it's so much better than old cork gaskets. I mean, back in the day, boy, if you didn't know how to tighten a cork gasket, you was in trouble in, in just a minute because you'd blow them out or either you wouldn't have enough tension on them to live through a heat cycle and then they get loose. And it was a, you know, cork gaskets is, a, is definitely a learning curve if you have never been in that world. No, they ain't got no threads in the block. Someone's like that. They missing threads in certain locations. So now, we're going to get ready for the cylinder heads, and we got to work on the heads. The valve job looks like crap on them, so we're going to bust the heads apart. We're going we're gonna to put a set of springs on anyway. The, the, it's still got stock springs, and sometimes they do break, so as cheap as a fresh set of like LS6 springs are, um, we're going to go ahead and put a set on and the deck surface looks good. They've been cut and, and all of that's fine, but the, the valve job itself, the, it, it, it don't look too good. So we'll get everything set up and then we'll get into that. All right. So the, the, we're going to stop the video right there. It was getting a little long. So we had to break it up into two more parts. I thought we was going to be able to just wrap it into one last episode, but it was, it was getting a little excessive. So there'll be one more part, uh, to, to this series. Um, one thing, don't forget at 25,000 subscribers, we're going to do the cam, uh, and lifter giveaway package. And, uh, again, we really appreciate all the subscribers, the comments, all of that. It's just, it's, it, it just keeps growing and we, and we really appreciate it. I hope that, uh, you know, this series is, you, you know, help somebody and it's been educational and, you know, if, if, we're going to try to keep these going. We've got tons more builds here staged, ready to start. So, uh, we got a lot of neat stuff coming, but, uh, but thank you, uh, like, share, subscribe, and, uh, we'll see you on the next one.